Hi, today we're going to go over the build of an Egg Finder mini transmitter kit, which is part of the GPS tracking family uh, and, egg, and Egg Timers uh, products. And it is the smaller version of the Egg Finder TX, which is functionally the same, except the, TX, the larger TX can also handle an open logger module, which the mini cannot uh, fit because it's too small. Uh, and also the mini does is smaller, so it has a smaller ground plane, which could, in theory, make it uh, have less of a transmission um, distance but I have not had a problem with it and frankly this is my workhorse transmitter uh, for most of the rockets that I fly. Um, this is the setup I have it's a Hako uh, FM203 uh, soldering station I use a 0.3 millimeter iron with uh, my own soldering wire uh, I have some pan devices a silicon mat um, a vent fan and um, I, this this build isn't that hard, but uh, there are some very small pieces, uh, and it's a really small uh, component. So there there are some pretty tight spaces to be soldered here. So it might might be a little tough with a kind of a generic iron. So open up your bag uh, and lay out all your parts. We're going to do an inventory here. There's not a lot of parts in this kit. Uh, there are a couple of complicated ones that take a little while, like the RF module. But uh, generally, uh, it's it's just a few parts so it's it's a pretty quick build I think. Uh, once you get all your parts out take everything out of the anti-static bags lay everything out uh, and then we'll do the inventory. We're doing the Rev C3 uh, version of the uh, Egg Finder Mini transmitter and this was uh, current as of 2023 when I was doing this build. So here's the PCB the main PCB it's got the uh, GPS antenna already uh, installed which is awesome. This is the RF module um, next up, you're going to have a 3.3 volt voltage regulator. Pretty standard part on most of these egg uh, finder kits. This is a, a diode. Then you have an LED. Um, you do have one set of resistors, 330 ohm. They're going to be marked 331. You're going to need one of these, and you get two. You have some capacitors. This is a 0.1 UF, and this is what he, uh, they would consider a paper carrier. So when you're looking at them, there are quite a few capacitors in this kit, so make sure you're using the right ones. The black striped ones in a plastic case, that's the 1 UF. And then you also have some uh, 4.7 UF ones that are on a, have a green stripe. Other than that, they look identical, so you have to make sure you're using the right ones here. And then finally, you have some 10 UF ones that have, are in a plastic carrier but have no stripe. So four different kinds of uh, capacitors. Then we've got an angle header, um, and then a bunch of two-pin headers that we'll be using for the run and program modules. You get a stubby antenna, and then you get some of the soldering wire that uh, is a point uh, two mil Kester wire. It's excellent stuff, so go ahead and use that if you don't have any. And then you get a jumper cable. So, like I said, we're going to be using the doing the Rev C3 version of this uh, kit, and I use a pan of ice. Uh, I I do recommend having a vice of some kind, a hobby vice. These are great for uh, all your soldering uh, projects, but also you know just in the hobby in general. And then I use a pair of pointy tweezers and a pair of flat tweezers. So set up your board in the vise, and we're going to start off with the 0.1 UF capacitors. These again are the ones in the paper carrier, and they're going to go into that spot marked C104 right next to the GPS antenna. So the way you put these in is you uh, tin one of the pads, so heat up one of the pads and tin it with some solder, and then use your tweezers to move the capacitor into place, and you're basically just tacking it in uh, to one of the pads right now. So once it's tacked in, you let it cool for a second so it sticks, and then uh, one of the nice things about the vise is you can turn your board around, make it easier to uh, orient properly. But once you do, go ahead and solder each side in securely. Uh, you you want to get just enough solder in so that there's some underneath the component onto the pad and enough so that there's a nice little tent on top. Uh, but you don't want so much that you bridge underneath. Uh, next up, we're going to do the 10 UF uh, capacitors which go right next to it, uh, the, the capacitor we just put in. And I'm going to keep doing these in real time for a little bit, and then uh, we can speed them up uh, later on. But same procedure, tin one of the pads, slide your component into place to tack it, 
and things are a little tight in here so hopefully you've got a smaller soldering iron to work with uh, but go ahead and solder both sides securely same fashion a little bit of solder underneath on the pad and a nice uh, tent on top and you can see it's trying to bridge there right it's very tight so make sure you don't bridge between the components uh, there is it isn't actually bridged what you're seeing on the board that liquid is is flux so uh, it is not bridged and I do go back and clean the boards afterwards uh, to get that flux off but for during the build it'll all just stay there next up we're gonna do the LED and you notice it has these little green marks on one end um, that has to and then it has a triangle pointed one end that has to go in the area of the little diode mark for the LED um, and that's how you orient the LED on on the pad so once you have that it's put in the same way as the capacitors we just did you're just going to tin one of the pads and slide the LED in place to tack it on one side let it cool and then uh, solder both sides securely it's a little uh, you don't need quite as much solder here. Uh, you know, be careful not to solder over the component itself uh, and onto the LED. You just need enough to, you know, get it secure and to have a good connection. Okay, so once you have the LED in place, we're going to move on to the other side of the board and go to the voltage regulator. Now, for the voltage regulator. Uh, similar but tin the big pad on one side and get a you know decent amount of solder on there so the so the uh, component will stick then slide into place uh, same way and then make sure those three small pads uh, are lined up and the entire uh, component is square on the board to all four pads right once you're happy with it go ahead and turn it now you do want to wait 30 seconds between each one of these uh, pins when you solder them uh, because it, that'll keep the uh, chip from overheating. I did wait 30 seconds. We're going to cut that out of the video so you don't have to sit here and watch uh, nothing happening. Now, when you do these pins, get once again, you want some underneath the pin, uh, connecting it to the pad, and then a nice tent over the pin itself, uh, securing the chip in place. Once you're done with the three small pins, go to the other side and put a, put a decent chunk here. You know, heat up your pad, heat up the, the pin, the large pin, and put a, a good chunk of solder on. One, it, it holds the chip, get a good connection, but also it acts out as a bit of a heat sink for this voltage regulator. Okay, next up, we've got the one resistor, uh, the Mark 331. Uh, same procedure here as all the other uh, service mounted components. P tin the pad slide the component into place cool it a little bit let it stick if it's if it's off a little bit just reheat the uh, reheat the pad move move the chip around you can see I had a little trouble getting it on here but no big deal uh, just keep uh, reheating it until it's in place and then go ahead and solder it in securely no problem with the resistor in place the next thing up is the 4.7 UF connectors you can see them right next to the voltage regulator there so should be getting good at this uh, service mounted procedure by now these ch these capacitors are a little bit larger than the 0.1 UF so they can be a little tricky a little slippery um, and there's not a lot of room there next to the voltage regulator so I am tacking both the 4.7 and the 1 UF in at the same time. I wouldn't recommend taking them out of the package at the same time because they look identical, so you might mix them up. Once you get the 4.7 one in, uh, I then go ahead and tack the 1 UF in uh, at the same time, make it a little bit quicker. Uh, but once they're both tacked in, you can turn the board and solder them both in at the same time. And once we get this, these two components in, we are done with all of the capacitors and resistors. And the next thing we're going to do uh, is get the, um, the diode on. Now you'll see the diode has a line on one side, that white line. That white line has to match the white line on the PCB. Now in this case, we're only going to tin this one pad away from, uh, the, so the same size as the line and then tack our diode into place. And we're not going to solder the other side right now. We're gonna wait until we uh, uh, solder in our battery cable before we do that. So for now, just, uh, just tack it in 
and that's it. So next we're going to put these little two millimeter uh, headers in to the program and run spots. So just drop them into place and then take a little tape and tape them you know, securely to the board. I just like to push the tape right through the pins, makes it really easy to stick them on. Once you've got them in place, go ahead and solder those pins uh, securely to the board. You want uh, a nice tent of solder, a uh, nice shiny tent of solder around the pins. They should kind of drop into those holes. If they're sitting on top, it might mean you have a cold solder. Uh, so make sure, you know, they're right here you can't see it it blurred a little bit they, but it was sitting on top little heat right dropped right in and, and they're secured properly so with the angle header we have to bend the pins out a little bit to about a 45 degree angle so they'll sit uh, nicely on the board so the whole thing will sit nicely and kind of stick out a little bit make it a lot easier when you want to attach your cable on uh, if you ever need to hook it up to a computer so I, I found the tweezers bend these pins just fine but go ahead and just bend them out pair of pliers whatever you whatever's easiest for you at about a 45 degree so that's I, I felt I felt that was pretty good uh, they're all straight and then they're gonna sit right on top of the board on those three pads uh, and you want to just angle the, the uh, pins away so um, tin the middle pad and we're going to rest the while we keep heat on the pad we're going to rest the angle header right into that solder now I found it easier to hold it with a uh, pair of pliers because it's, it's kind of slippery when you're using tweezers or something but get it securely onto that pad hold it in place and let that solder cool we're just tacking it here this isn't the final soldering once that tack you've tacked it in like that go ahead and solder all of the pins uh, with a decent chunk of solder because it, it has a lot of uh, you know torque on it when you're when you're plugging and unplugging uh, the cables so make sure all three pins have, are well soldered in. Once the angle header is soldered in, we're going to uh, install our battery cable. In this case, I'm using a regular uh, JST connector and make sure the positive and the negative cables are properly oriented. Um, and so put the positive cable through. I'm using a pair of helping hands here. And now we're gonna go ahead and not only solder the cable in, but solder that other side of that diode in that we left empty before. So do that. Um, and then solder the negative cable in on the other side. And once again, I'm using some helping hands uh, with my vase to hold that cable in place. At this point, the board is actually functional. Uh, we don't have the RF board on yet, but before we put it on, we're going to test it to make sure that it works and all the components we've stuck on are, are uh, working. So first put the jumper on the run uh, pins, and then you're going to need the data cable, the serial data cable uh, from Egg Timer. And the white cable goes to the RXD pin and the black cable goes to the ground pin. And you need to, so then you're gonna plug the USB cable into your computer. Make sure you know what the, which COM port you're using. And you can determine that in the computer management under device manager uh, in Windows. If you're using a Mac or something, you're gonna have to figure this out yourself. Um, and then I, you need a terminal, a serial terminal program. I like PuTTY. That's my personal preference. Uh, in the settings in PuTTY, you would put the COM3 in in the serial line, choose serial interconnection type, set the speed to 9600, uh, and then hit open. And you're going to get a terminal window that looks like this. Um, connect your battery to the transmitter. And if everything's if you did everything right and you've set up your, your software right and the cables right you should start getting output that looks like this and that means we did everything okay and we can move on and the next thing up and the last large component to put on is the rf module itself now put a piece of tape uh, using masking tape here paper masking tape nothing that's going to leave residue along that edge long edge of uh, notch connectors on one side and line everything up properly the, the RF module all those notch connectors and all the pads on both sides the the uh, seven on one side and the two on the other all have to match up nicely and then once you've done that um, also make sure the other piece of tape is completely uh, obscuring that edge because it you can't get any solder on any of the components on the RF module or it will it could ruin them um, then you're going to start soldering each notch as you can see here uh, you just heat up the pad and the notch get a little solder in there not a lot 
just enough to make a good connection uh, without bridging underneath. Um, and you're waiting 30 seconds between each one of these. Obviously, I speeded up the video, uh, but you're, you're going to wait 30 seconds between soldering each notch. And then you're going to turn the board around and solder the other two notches on the other side. Same way uh, as you did the other seven. So once all of the notches are done, take your tape off, and it should look like this. So the RF module's in. And the next thing we have to do is put the antenna on. Now, I personally like to use a little bit of Loctite, uh, just the blue stuff that's removable. Just a small drop on the screw itself uh, is enough to kind of help lock the antenna in place. Put the screw through the hole. And then the antenna uh, goes with the, there's kind of like a, a notch on one side of the antenna. That goes on the same side as the GPS uh, antenna. So screw it in and then make sure you have it nice and tight and that Loctite should keep it in place and keep it from falling out. Uh, one of the last things we need to do here is we want to secure that um, the, RF, the GPS antenna with a little bit of epoxy on each end. Now don't put any on the sides where the soldering connections are but just on the ends. And I'm using some West Systems uh, epoxy here with some uh, lightweight fairing filler in it to make it nice and thick. Uh, just a little bit on each side of the GPS antenna should be good. Uh, these can be dislodged in like a hard landing or or a high G event. Uh, so a little bit of epoxy on each side will help to make sure that uh, antenna does not come off uh, and stays secured to the board. Um, so go ahead and uh, epoxy that up. Let that cure. And at this point, you are functionally done with the build. And your whole board should look something like this now. Um, once you have this done, we're going to test it outside. We're going to you know, test to make sure that the, the whole thing actually works and transmits. So connect your battery. Uh, let it connect to a satellite. You can see the indicator lights are going on here on the RF module. Uh, we're outside. We've hopefully got some satellites um, being tracked. And we're going to use an the egg finder LCD uh, module to connect to it and make sure we've got a good connection. Uh, this one has a GPS in it so it will go the first thing it'll go through is the status screen and then it'll look for the GPS for the receiver itself. This is not the GPS on the tracker. Once it gets uh, a fix for the for the receiver then it will go out and try to find the transmitter which is this. It did find the transmitter. It's waiting for a fix and we've got a great connection here. Uh, we've got a lat long it's uh, currently seeing three satellites. We're at 600 feet. So we know it works. Uh, it was a good build. Uh, and this is, you know, you could put this in your rocket in almost any way. Uh, I like to put it uh, hanging off the shock cord in a tube. I'll put that in a different video, but excellent transmitter. These things work on virtually, you know, all flights. I've used these on big rockets, small rockets. Excellent module. So good luck with your build. Uh, and if you have any questions, put them down below. Thanks.